Now it is time to take a look at the marquee tool. These are tools that are going to let us select a portion of the canvas to limit the actions that we're taking, whether it's inking or coloring or whatever. It's going to limit it to just part of the canvas. So for example, if I wanted to just work on up here in the upper left, I could kind of limit that. And there's there's going to be a lot of uses for this. this is, these are great tools and you should become familiar with them, definitely. So let me put some uh, just some ink on the paper or whatever, so we can see something that we're working on. Okay, that'll work. And uh, now we're going to go to the marquee tool, this one. Actually, before we look at these tools in here, let me show you how you can select the entire canvas. Um, there's some, there's sometimes will be times when we want to do this. And to do that, you just press Control and A. So hold down Control and press A. And we get these dotted lines around the entire edge of the canvas. And also this bar appears that lets us do a variety of operations to the canvas. So I'm not, I'm going to explain the other ones in a second, but the first one to release this is deselect. So let's just deselect this right now. And now let's use the first marquee, which is the rectangle marquee. It's just going to make a selection in the shape of a rectangle and I'll put it right here. So just click and drag and then release, and this area has been selected. Now the other items on our toolbar can do different things. The second one right here, we already did deselect. This one is going to invert the selected area, as it says. So right now the area being affected is in here. If I want to paint, for example, or spray, let's put some spray in here, it's only going to affect in there. Okay, I can paint everywhere else, but it won't. It won't bleed out. It won't work over here. Okay, so if I want to invert this selection, I can just press this. So now my paint is going to work out here, but it's not going to work in here. As you can see. Okay, so that inverts it, and I can change it back to the earlier selection by just inverting it again. And now it is back to this area. The third one is to expand the selected area. I click on this, and it will give me this option that I can enter a number, uh, let's do 400, and it will expand this box by 400 pixels in each direction. As you can see, and I will undo that by pressing Control Z. Actually, let's leave that and let's actually use the next one, which is shrink selected area. So if I click on this and I click 700, for example, it jumps in by 700. So that is the shrink selected area. This next one is going to actually clear everything in here inside the area of the box, but it's going to only clear this layer. So you can, let me show you what I mean. So if I add a layer behind it, that is some red paint and I clear this, it's only going to clear the layer with the red. If I want to change this layer, I need to either go to that layer or select them both by pressing control and holding it down, and then I can clear all of it at once. Okay, so that is the clear. This is our clear outside the selection, so basically everything else in the picture. If I clear the, click this, it'll go away. And again, this is a scale up, scale down, rotate, a transformation, but it does not offer free transformation, so it just can let you Oh, the, because there's no uh, nothing in here, We there's nothing to transform, it says. So now it'll let us kind of rotate it or expand it. And of course, be aware that if, it, if you're enlarging, you're going to start pixelating and losing quality. When you're done, you can hit uh, enter and it will stay there. It takes a second because it this is one of those things that uses a good amount of processing power, and it will still be selected in this new configuration. This is just a fill tool, so it'll fill up the area. If I change it, for example, and I filled it. And then finally, this is to add a tone. If I make a tone, you can adjust it like other tones. This is pretty tightly knit, so you have to zoom in to actually see the tone, but it is a tone. So that is the rectangle marquee and most of the features. Also, let me uh, show you again if I uh, select. If 
I select and uh, the last one actually will let me add or remove tons of other options that uh, if, if I want to add it to my uh, to my uh, my bar if I create bar out there it'll let me do that and if I'm using one of these a lot if I was using level correction a lot for example it would make sense to put it on that bar so I don't have to go and find it on the menu the edit menu every time so this is really great I usually just leave it in the basic configuration but if you want to add stuff or remove stuff it is really easy to do okay I'm going to release this and show you the other marquee tools we have ellipse which as it sounds is just the exact same thing except in the shape of an ellipse gives you the the edit bar again and so on the next one is the lasso marquee which is gonna let us do any shape as our marquee before I go on I should probably also mention that we have a ton of uh, tool options and sub tool I mean sub options that we can make to how how our, our uh, selections work so you can change the anti-aliasing like before these though you should probably understand so the first one is select new which means that every time I draw with this it's going to create that as our new one and then it's going to ignore the old one but I have other options I could do this select additionally which I could do that and then I could add more add more add more and so on and make this my selection I have a subtract basically uh, deselect partially which is where if I want to unselect this part I could just erase it or chop it off I guess and then finally we have select already selected part which means that it's only going to select from what I've already selected so if I say just this part in here it's going to just get that part and not get all the other area that I circled around out here okay so that is the lasso marquee and the polyline marquee is as it sounds the polyline and you can adjust this like before with how it is made and so on using different curves and so on next we have the selection pen which is with this I'll be able to draw a path and then that is the area that will be selected by the pen so it's not really what we're circling around it's the path itself so right now it's on select additionally that's why I added that second part erase selection is as it sounds it just kind of removes something from being selected so I have all this selected right now if I want to unselect it I just go over it let's say like this for example I can un erase in quite a strange manner to get this odd selection if I want to fill this now with red oops I'm on the the tone layer let me add a layer okay you can do that and things like that and then finally shrink selection will kind of give you a lasso tool but in instead of just um, I'm going to turn off the other layers because it's only going to affect this one if I circle around this for example it's not going to use the path around it and the, the inside it's just going to zoom into the red part so I release and it just jumps in and ignores all this other white space because that's just paper so it's not going to regard that it's actually only using this this layer so that those are the selection marquee tools and if I wanted to do something like remember I showed you how to copy an entire layer but if you want to copy just a part of a layer you can do that you just press Control C and then Control V and now if I turn this off the only part that was copied was that layer onto this new layer so you can do that and then if you want to move it around or whatever you can do whatever it's very flexible with what it, what you want to do it's, it's pretty amazing so those are your selection marquee tools